Like painting or writing, paintless dent repair is an art. A sufficient amount of practice is required for good results. Minda Dent Incorporated accepts no responsibility for any property or personal damage. Hi, my name is David Jones, and tonight we're going to show you the secrets of paintless dent repair. Paintless dent repair is a series of techniques where we can take out small dents such as hail damage and door dings without using paint or standard bodywork techniques. First of all, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of the technique. I'm going to show you how to make some tools of your own. Then I'll go into a little more detail on the deep dark secrets of paintless dent repair. And then I'll give you a complete review of all the tools that you may desire to make for yourself. So first of all, I've got a car here with hail damage. And I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of the paintless dent repair technique. Okay, what we have here is a hell dent. I've, I've circled the dent, and I also have two arrows kind of pointing it out to you. I've set up an inexpensive fluorescent light to reflect the dent so that I can see it to where I can work it. You should be seeing the shadow of the dent kind of reflecting off the bottom bulb of the light. Now I'm going to go underneath the panel of the car, directly beneath the dent, with my little dent tool, and I'm going to start pressing up. Now you'll notice wherever I press up, the light pinches together. That's where the tip of my tool is, and that's the part that's actually fixing the dent on the car. So I look for the shadow. That's where the low spot is. And push up, and there we have it, a fixed hell dent. What I've got now is I'm going to show you the underneath of the car while I'm working a dent. Here's the tool that I have in my hand. I'm just going to grip it in my hand, and between my thumb and forefinger, I've got the tip of it. I'm going to rest my thumb up against the bottom of the hood for control, and I just push up while I'm watching in the light. Well, that's all there is to that dent. You may have wondered why I've got this screwdriver bent. That's so in case I have to slide up under, these, under one of these braces, I can slide the tool right up underneath and use the brace as a fulcrum to pry with. Now that you've seen the quick demonstration and you've seen one of the tools that we use, let's go over to the vise and show you how to make this tool so you can get started on your own practice. Okay, what we have here is an inexpensive Stanley screwdriver or any name brand will do fine. Don't buy too expensive of a one because we're going to be hitting this up, grinding it, bending it, violating any warranty that it ever had. And also, the more expensive screwdrivers are usually thicker stock through here. And that's a disadvantage when you're trying to put the screwdriver up one of those braces. You don't want it to be too thick or it'll bend up parts that you don't want to bend up. And if it's too thin, it won't be strong enough to move the dent. So get one that's about an eighth of an inch stock, not too heavy, not too small. Now I'm just going to put this into the vise, and then I'm going to hammer off the handle. OK, now I'm going to put this back into the vise so that I can heat up where I want it bent. I want the bend to be right around in here, and so I'm only going to put the tip of it into the vise. If you put the place you're going to bend too close to the jaws of the vise, the vise will soak up all the heat that you're trying to get on the spot that you're wanting to bend. So just place the end of it in two, and we'll plan to do the heat right in here. Okay, now I'm going to light my torch. This is just a regular propane torch. If you have an acetylene torch, it'll heat it a lot faster, but they're a lot more expensive. I'm going to heat the area I'm trying to bend until it's cherry red. When it's cherry red, it'll be pretty pliable, almost like a Gumby doll. 
Now I want to bend it to where it's just short of 90 degrees. If it's past 90 degrees, it's too easy to bend the tool over double while you're frying on it. Now the reason that I'm heating it up is so it won't crack while I'm bending it. The metal should start to change colors here in just a moment. And be sure and have your pliers handy and not use your fingers to bend it. It's also probably pretty smart to have a pair of fireproof, fire, fireproof gloves on while you're doing this. I don't actually right now, so I guess that's a bad mark on me for today. Okay, now the metal's getting cherry red in there. I'm going to reach over with the pliers and bend it just short of a 90 degree bend. Keep the heat on and let it heat up while it's bent and that will stress relieve it. Then I'm going to take the heat off and just let it cool on its own. If you take it off and toss it into a bucket of water, you'll harden it. You don't really want that bend to be too hard or it'll snap while you're prying on it. Okay, now this has had a little bit of time to cool, so I'm going to take it on out of the vise and hammer the handle back on. You can go ahead and kind of line it back up on the grooves that it came out of, if you'd like. Hammer it back on, and we're about ready to go. And here we, we've got just a regular, inexpensive screwdriver with about a 90 degree bend. Next, we're going to grind it down a little bit through here, just to make it a little thinner in cross section. And we're going to smooth out the point so that we can get a nice, smooth, thing to press up with on the underside of the panel. So let's head over to the grinder. Okay, what we're going to do now is grind this tool so that it'll be a little easier to slide under the braces and shape the tip so that it's smooth enough to push up the dent without being too sharp. I'm going to file down the top a little, work a little on the sides, and then since this is a Phillips, I'm going to grind off the Phillips portion. I have a flat head tool over here. On the flat head, I would most likely grind off those portions. That way, in case I'm turning it side to side, these won't be pushing up. I want the tip to be pushing up. And I'll just flatten the top a little, maybe a little on the bottom and on the sides. So let's go ahead and turn on the grinder and get started. I should also mention at this point that you should have safety glasses on. The safety guards are removed from this for clear video demonstration purposes, but don't take your guards off and do be wearing safety glasses. Gloves would also be a good idea. ground off the sides and now I want to very carefully round the tip. I don't want jagged corners on the tool. Okay, this is the finished tool got just less than a 90 degree bend so that it'll fit up under a brace. 
The very tip is just lightly rounded, and the, there's no jagged, sharp edges to scratch you or the paint on the underneath of the hood. This tool here is the answer to your question of what happens if I come up too high? All this is, is it is a regular nail set that I've glued a wire nut to, flatten it out a little bit, and put some tape over it. Let me show you real quick how to make this. This right here is all you need to make the tapper, this and some, a little bit of tape. This is just a wire, electrical wire nut made out of plastic. A, this happens to be a 3 32 inch nail set. The size isn't particularly important. And a little bit of super glue. I use the fingernail type super glue because it's a little thicker and seems to dry a little faster than some of the stuff that comes in the little foil bottles. I'm just going to put a couple drops of super glue inside the wire nut. And then screw the nail set right on top of the wire nut. And as soon as the super glue dries, I'll just trim these little ribs off that are on the wire nut, flatten the top of that out a little bit, and then we'll put some tape over it and be ready to tap down dents. The plastic will cushion the blow of the nail set enough to where it won't scratch the paint. That's why we put the wire nut on top of the steel tool. If you just use a steel tool, you'll actually put a dent in the paint itself. So the wire nut is a real important part of this. And the tape that I'll put over it is to keep the plastic from slipping on the car and also give it another little bit of cushion so that we don't scratch the paint. Okay, I've just got a little strip of cloth duct tape and just stick it over the end, smooth it around, and we've got our tapper tool. Okay, now I want to discuss some of the real important parts of light and how I need you to set up the angles to make it easy for you to do your work. What this here, this is my prop rod. This is a extendable painter's pole with a rubber foot from a chair leg stuck on the end. I use this to prop up the hood. You can use a broomstick or whatever. I just found this inexpensive, adjustable, and simple to use. This is a standard rubber bungee cord. And I'll hook this on here just to hold the hood firmly down so it doesn't pop up and down too much while I'm using it. Now notice I have this light angled to be parallel with the hood. In your garage while you're working, before you invest in a movable light fixture like this, I suggest that you have chains of variable lengths so that you can raise or lower different ends of the light to adjust it to where it's going to be at the same angle as the hood. The reason you want it at the same angle as the hood is you want the light to cast a straight line across the hood where you're seeing it. That will help you to be able to see the dent easier. You're going to notice the dent as the light bending together. So you need straight lines of light across the dent you're going to be working on. You also you want the light at a relatively low angle to the hood. The reason for this is, is you want to see the shadow of the light. The lower the angle, the longer the shadow will be. Right now is the most important part of the video. The very hardest part of paintless dent repair is finding out where the tip of your tool is pushing up. I'm going to demonstrate here by right at the end of this arrow pushing up right at the tip of that. My tip is pointing up right there. Now if you'll notice the lines of the light are angled up there and they're angled down through here. Wherever the angles of the lines of the light meet is where your tip is. But right now, my tip is right underneath that. An exercise that I would suggest you do 
would be to lightly push up and move around in circles. Push up just hard enough to make the light bend, but not make the metal bend, and go in circles. And work your way to where the tip is. You will eventually get to where you will be able to see a tiny pinprick of light and that is the tip of your tool. But at first, focus on where the light, the lines in the light are bending together. I'm going to go to a slightly different tool and move over to the other line. And I'm pushing up right beneath the tip of it. Again, it's pinching together right where the tip of my tool is. Okay, now move down to the center of the dent. To work a dent, you generally work from the outside in. On a small dent like this, if you'll start at the very lowest part of the dent, you don't have to work your way into it. If they're shallow enough, you can pretty much start across the middle and get it out. It's the bigger dents you have to worry about really circling in. Okay, this dent here, just pushing up, I'm right, the center of that dent, pushing up. You have to develop the feel for how hard to push the metal without it staying bent. Push the metal up just enough to make it bend to where the light moves, but not the metal staying. That's where you find where you're at. And then you give it just a little extra push, and the metal should stay where it's supposed to. But again, this is the thing that will take you probably several weeks of practice to learn. Is finding out exactly where the tip of your tool is underneath the panel. Don't try and expect the tip of your tool to be where you think it is. Look for it. Look for where it is pushing up, not where you think it is. Again, be patient. This is, this is the part of paintless dent repair that takes hours of practice to get right. Okay, next, I'm going to work on this dent right here just below this body line. As you can see, the body line casts a shadow in itself, so it's going to be a little trickier to do. Sometimes you have to move the light at a higher angle in order to get over this hump. I'm going to go ahead and go underneath this panel and work this dent. This dent's a little larger, so I need to use a little more strategy working from the outside in. Okay, now while I'm working on this dent, I want you to see how I'm pushing up from underneath. Here's a shot from underneath. I'm using the heel of my palm to push up against the tool. I'm using my fingertips to hold the tool so that I can move it precisely. If you have to, you can hold the tool like this and use the back smooth edge of the tool. I want to discourage you against sliding the tool across. If you do that, if you slide the tool across, you're going to end up with lines across the top of the hood. So practice by just pushing straight up. Don't scratch across. You'll scratch the underneath, and you'll leave lines on top that are quite visible. Okay, this is a slightly thinner tool of the same basic design. This one is useful for sliding up underneath a brace. And you can slide this in and out according to how far you need to have. And the lip of this brace will give you a fulcrum point to turn on. 
So use much less pressure when you're up under a brace. When your hand is pushing up itself, you don't have the mechanical advantage of having this to pry with. So slide this up under here. You know, rest as much of your hand up against it for control as you can. Then very gently push up on a dent. I'm just going to tap this down with a gentle tap. Remember, you can always tap it one more time if you have to. You're almost just letting the hammer get about two inches above the nail set and letting gravity do the work. Don't swing it at all. Now you'll notice that I'm just barely lifting the hammer above the tapper. Just letting it drop. Using a hammer and tapper is a natural part of this technique. Many times when you have a larger dent, in order to raise the lowest part of the dent up, say in the middle of a dent that would be right in here, the middle of it, if you raise the middle of it out, the outside edges will come up a little too far. So larger dents are often a process of working up a little, gently tapping down the high spots, working up a little more, and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Just be sure to keep fresh tape on your tapper. Make sure the wire nut isn't too thin and it's not scratching your paint. And remember that you can always tap it again and you can always bring it back up a little bit. It's a back and forth process that's all part of the technique. Just don't hit too hard and don't come up too far too fast and you'll get it down pretty quickly. In our companion manual, you may have already read that I talked about bending bars. A bar is a heavier duty tool. They're a little harder to make and so I kept them till the later part of your techniques. The screwdrivers you can buy for just a few dollars and make them yourself and they're a little easier. But now I think it's time to go on to showing you what a bar is and how to use a bar. This is a piece of 3 8 inch steel rod. You can use mild steel rod or you can use high quality stainless steel if you so desire. It has a bent handle to afford a hand grip such as this or this or this or however it happens to be convenient to hold. We have several different tips. This one is a short tip with a rounded end. Sometimes there are dents that you cannot get to without drilling a hole on an interior panel. To do this, I feel the best way is to use what's called a spot weld cutter. It has a pilot with a cutter. You use an, an awl with a nice solid shaft and tap a hole in the metal and then drill a half inch hole into the metal and we can through that hole we can insert one of our bars made out of 3 8 inch thick metal or any of our screwdrivers. Now I want to demonstrate the use of a hook and a bar on the underside of the car. I'm putting my S hooks that I've put together this is a pair of them I've just simply hammered them together, and I'm hanging it into an existing hole on the underside of the hood. Now I can slide my bar along the hook, and the hook will give me the mechanical advantage I need. Now we're going to get into some of the other parts of the car, and you're going to see why we have different lengths of bars here. Okay, right now, on this car, we have some dents that are right up here. So, I've got this bar 
that's angled, and I can slide it in underneath in front of the door and work it up from here. So I'm sliding it in, and I can work the dent in the fender. The light I have parallel to the front of the car. I'd run over it if the car was driving. And the light is straight across the dent to where I can see the dent in the middle, and I see it just like I would see any other dent. But I am getting to this dent by sliding in from the door jam. Usually you can get by without having to drill any holes. If the dent is farther up, I have a longer tool. If it's too far up, I can remove this front light here and come in from the other direction. Of course, I would have to move my light to where I'm standing now. Door dings are another use for these long rods. We can, if necessary, drill an access hole along the back of the door and insert the rod through the hole and work a dent up in here or up in here. It is, of course, much better to simply remove the door panel and access the dent from the inside of the door without having to drill holes. But in all honesty, that's not always possible. But if you will look, and we'll show you in a minute, a door already has several plugs and holes in it already, and often you can gain access to the inside of a door panel through those holes. This is an example of how you could get into the inside of a door without removing a panel or without drilling a hole. This is the back door of a four-door car. With this plug removed, there's an open hole that we can stick a bar up into to work dents in the back door. When we're done, we simply put the rubber grommet back on. Okay, now we're going to work a couple door dings to give you an idea of the techniques available to you. Now you probably have already noticed our light here is straight up and down, parallel with the door. To achieve this, you'll probably want to hang one of your shop lights on one chain from the roof hanging straight up and down. And also notice that it is relatively close to the car so that I can have a shallow angle. This is so, again, I can see the longer the shadow, the easier it is to see the dent. Okay, the three dents that are right around here, in order to get to them, I'm going to need to drill a hole right here. So I've got my punch. I'm going to punch a hole. And then I'm going to use my spot weld bit. You can use a regular drill bit, but they have a tendency to grab the edges of the hole and pull the drill on through. These drill a hole of a certain depth and stop. If you get a drill that pulls itself on through, you'll want to end up drilling all the way through the other side, which is not what you want to do. So I've drilled a one-half inch hole in this door. I'll plug this with a factory-looking plug, and I'll never know that it was there. Now I'm going to use this short bar tool to work the dents that I drilled the hole to.
Stop the service. This last one, we've come out just a little too far, and so we'll tap it down a little bit and then touch up the remainder that's left there on those other two. I finished touching up those dents that I started on earlier. Remember, you use the same techniques. You'll see the light pinching together on the outside. Uh, same basic deal. Now here's the plug that I'm going to plug this hole with. and. As he pans back out, you should be able to see that there's also factory plugs in there. So our little plug matches what the factory has already done to the car. Now for a, a review of how to get to the different parts of a car. The trunk, you can work just like the hood. If it has a liner, pull the liner down, and it has braces just like the hood would, and you work it just like you would the hood. This rear fender with dents in this part of the fender, you can either open the trunk and come in through the trunk. You can remove this tail light and come in through the holes for where the tail light came out of. You can also, for dents in this portion, you can drill a hole here and plug a hole here and come in at this angle. Sometimes you can also come up from underneath in the wheel well. This of course is preferable because it won't leave a plug where it's visible. The rear door, you can come in along this edge if you have to to get around a brace. You can pull off this rear door panel and come in through here. We also, on the rear door of the four-door car, also have holes that we can either open up by removing a grommet on this side of the door, or we can, if necessary, come in through a hole in here. The front door, we can remove the panel. We can come in through a hole we've drilled. Occasionally, you can remove a rubber molding and come in through that hole. If you have to drill a hole, you can move aside the rubber molding. You can hide your plug and be a little sneaky about it. Dents in the top of the car have to be removed by after you've taken down the headliner. I would recommend that you go to a professional trim shop, have them take the headliner out of the car for you, then you repair the dents, and then take it back to the professional trim shop to have the headliner reinstalled. If it has a sunroof, make sure it's someone that is competent on removing and reinstalling sunroofs. This isn't anything that's particularly difficult, but it's just a little bit beyond the scope of this particular video. The front fender, we can come in through the door jam and get the dents that are up to the front portion of the fender by coming in through the door jam at the gap. We can also come up through the wheel wells if necessary. We can remove the front marker light and come in through here. And also, it occasionally is necessary to open the hood and to drill a hole in the vertical part of the fender here for some certain dents that you can't get to any other way. The hood is the easiest part. You simply raise the hood, remove the panel, and have at it. You all, you've probably seen some of the type of dents that are a large, shallow dent in the hood. We call them glamour shot dents, imagining that some beautiful model sat on the hood and left a bit of an impression. Now, there's an easy and quick way to get most of or all of this type of dent out. We use the cake cutter. What we do is you simply open up the hood. Now what has happened on many of those type of dents is the brace has bent enough to stay, but 
the metal on the hood isn't bent enough to stay. So if we take the cake cutter and cut loose the glue holding, holding the sheet of the hood onto the brace, the dent will simply pop out. So cut loose the glue dots that are around the dent in the hood and they'll just pop right out. The part that doesn't pop out, you can work using your same general techniques. But most of the time, you can pop out 90% of it just by cutting loose the braces. If the braces are bent too much, you need to re-glue them. Get some silicone glue and re-glue the brace. But if the dent wasn't too deep, some of the glue in summer or when the sun is shining enough will get pliable enough to reattach itself to the hood. I've done one hood three different times. I've cut loose the braces every time. The sun keeps re-sticking the glue in the braces. So glue them if it's too much. If not, see if the sun will melt the glue and reattach itself. You can get started in your dent work with a tapper, one screwdriver, and a light that you can adjust. Here's kind of an example of what a professional dent man might have for his more complete toolkit. You'll notice the different lengths of screwdrivers and the different thicknesses of the screwdrivers. The angled screwdriver, a longer screwdriver with a non 90 degree angle right here. We have the thin screwdrivers with the angled ends the very long screwdriver with the 90 degree end, the screwdriver that's bent so we can put it through the holes in the handle and get extra leverage. Here's our hood prop rod and a bungee cord. We have several different tappers of several different tip widths for hammering down different sizes of dents. We have the spot weld bit to drill half inch holes. We have different types of hole plugs. And then we have the different rods. We have the ones with the short ends. Then we have the ones with the longer, more complex bent ends. The reason that we have, we don't just use the ends that are long, is the shorter the tip, the easier it is to control. The ones with the longer ends will reach into spots where the ones with the shorter ends won't go, but they're more difficult to control. So when you start out, start by making one with a short end. We have the very long, heavy-duty bars for reaching across long distances. They're made out of a thicker metal so they don't bend as much. We have a very thin rod with an angled end and another variation of that. Sometimes different lengths of bent ends are handy. Then we have our hammer, a hole punch. We have our cake cutter that we got in the cooking store that we used for cutting the braces. And then we have some sort of drill to use with our drill bits and spot weld cutters. Again, you don't need all of these to get started with, but eventually you'll collect more and more of these as you go along. A lot of times you'll have to make a tool with a certain length tip just to get to one dent. So as you do this more and more, your tool collection grows. But most of these are made out of simple scrap steel. They're not expensive at all to make. In conclusion, first of all, again, don't start practicing on a car. Go to a body shop and haul off an old hood, an old door, and practice on it. A lot of body shops will actually pay people to haul off their old sheet metal. At the very least, you should be able to buy an old dented hood for next to nothing. But please, practice on scrap metal before you tear into a car. It will take you a few tries before you get one right. And you don't want to have an ugly looking dent repair on your own car or a friend's car. And also, in conclusion, let me remind you 
If you can't see a dent, you can't fix it. Adjust your lights as many times as it takes. If it takes 100 times to get the light right on the dent to where you can see where that tip is, move it at 100 times. If you can't see it, you can't fix it. Concentrate on where your tip is, see it in the light, and work the metal from there.